your courses require hard work and take 10 days is there a shortcut <laughs> bargaining i was also born and brought up in a business house half of my present life i lived in business so i know all business people have the habit of bargaining bargaining when i went to my teacher i said 10 days oh impossible for me i am such a busy person to spare 10 days totally impossible understand i am intelligent person you give your technical work at home nothing doing all right i'll come for one day you teach me i practice in your presence nothing doing 10 days is the minimum required 100 years back it took one and a half month to learn this technique and in the these fast days today one and a half month who will spare so they reduced it reduced it to come to 10 days less than that one does not get anything one has to sharpen the mind otherwise again you are working at the surface level only so don't bargain sharpen your mind feel all kinds of sensations and train the mind not to react to these sensations and that will give you the good result you talk so much about suffering and mental defilements isn't your message pessimistic how pessimistic this is the most optimistic message misery is there but is there is way to come out of misery all the optimism is there if somebody says there is misery 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 no way to come out of it you have to suffer misery the whole life then yes pessimistic but here the message is you can come out of it whatever the misery may be there is a way to come out of all the miseries most optimistic message kya guru nanak dev ji ki shiksha vipassana se mel khati hai bilkul mel khati hai jab unki vaani mein se guzarte hain aur vipassana karte hain to dekhte hain ki ek ek bol unka kitna spasht hai केवल सच्चाई केवल सच्चाई आदि सच जुगादि सच है भी सच ना न कहो से भी सच सच्चाई से शुरू करो और आगे बढ़ते बढ़ते परम सत्य तक पहुंच जाओगे किम सच या रहा हो भी ये हर कदम सच्चाई के साथ द ट्रूथ दैट यू एक्सपीरियंस द ट्रूथ दैट यू एक्सपीरियंस यू कम अक्रॉस वेरी ग्रॉस ट्रूथ इन इनिशियली बट देन सटलर 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 सटलस ट्रूथ पर टेनिंग टू द मैटर सटलस ट्रूथ पर टेनिंग टू द माइंड एंड मेंटल कॉन्टेंट्स and then a stage comes you transcend this mind and matter and you come across the ultimate truth which cannot be described in words that has to be experienced so guru nanak's teaching is in line with vipassana because the technique was lost that is why we don't understand once we practice this technique it will become so clear that the teaching of nanak and all the gurus is for vipassana observe yourself know yourself and come out of your misery when cover as so many people from india and china one buddha's country and the other traditionally buddhist what is your advice to these expatriates in canada practice vipassana <laughs> become a real follower of buddha if you just keep on praising buddha oh, buddha wonderful buddha was so good buddha was what do you get of course you have devotion towards buddha perfectly all right but then you are sick a physician is there to help you to come out of your sickness and you keep on praying that that physician oh wonderful physician wonderful physician you don't take the medicine how will you come out of your illness so practice the teaching of buddha at the practical level not merely at the intellectual level or devotional level and this is the best thing one has to do and you can give a good example to people of this country and the whole world that the teaching of the enlightened one is not only for buddhists he never taught anything for buddhist he taught for the whole world he never taught buddhism he never made anybody a buddhist he taught a way of life dhamma a way of life and those who followed they were called dhammiko dharmic people who are following according to the law of nature law of nature is such if you break the law the law wants keep your mind pure if you break the law you will be punished then and there you will become miserable if you follow the law 
keep your mind pure you are rewarded then and there you feel so much of peace and harmony so follow the law of the nature and that is the teaching of the enlightened one if vipassana was lost to most of the world 500 years after the buddha died why did it lay dormant so so long until now because some people in myanmar had taken a vow that we won't allow it to die majority of the people have lost it we will maintain its purity very few people from teacher to pupil from teacher to people they maintain because there was a prediction that 2500 years after buddha passes away this wonderful technique in its pure form will come back from the country of myanmar to the country of origin it will be accepted by the people and then it will be around the world everywhere and people will accept it so for 2500 years they wanted to wait for that and maintain their spirity maintain their spirity and it is worked now many prophets have said the end of the world or a cleansing of the earth is coming do you believe this is true why or why not the cleansing of the earth we are responsible for spoiling the purity of the earth we are generating so much of pollution we talk of so much about this chemical pollution visible it is it is so harmful but what about the mental pollution everyone generates negativity negativity entire atmosphere gets polluted we are responsible for that and we are responsible to purify this atmosphere get it relieved from this pollution change the habit pattern of the mind and the earth will become free from all the miseries how can i practice dharma and yet held on my hopes and aspirations and make the world a better place you have hopes you have aspiration nothing wrong but to attain your hopes your aspiration if you keep on generating impurity in your mind you are far away from it you are losing the peace of your mind harmony of your mind so with the peace of the mind maintaining perfect balance of the mind do whatever is necessary in the human life good for you and good for others others also do you believe in reincarnation i am not interested in these beliefs beliefs are always blind beliefs why believe experience it see after death what happens do you get reincarnated or not <laughs> then only accept it will there be another ashoka certainly the technique the teaching spreads if a state takes that responsibility this is what happened in those days 200 years after buddha this person terror such a big terrorist when he realized and when he took this vipassana and changed the saintly person then it he thought it is my duty all my subject are my children and they are all suffering so he started spreading this technique he trained number of teachers and throughout the country it was a vast country at that time including afghanistan up to bengal north india to south india such a big population and he writes in one of the rock addicts all people in my country are living so peacefully living a moral life because of this particular technique that people are practicing it happened in the past it is bound to happen now some such person will realize sooner rather than later that there is a way by which larger number of people can practice it and become peaceful and the state leader of the state the ruler of the state has great responsibility for that and i am sure this is going to happen soon my husband died and i feel so sad how can vipassana help me if you are a good vipassana meditator then you will understand the vibrations are always very strong when you remember your husband who has died and you become sad you are generating sad vibration and this person wherever this person is gets in contact with the sad vibration becomes so sad so sad your husband is gone away by becoming sad he won't come back but 
you at least want this person to be happy, to be peaceful, wherever this person is, so send vibration of metta, love, compassion, may you be happy, wherever you are, may you be happy, may you be peaceful, may you get liberated from all your miseries, these vibrations, when one touches these vibrations, one becomes so peaceful, one becomes so happy, so instead of generating sadness, generate metta, love, compassion, and that you cannot do unless you practice vipassana, come out of your sadness and generate love and compassion. The Buddha taught eightfold path. Why neglect to share the rest of his teaching? Vipassana is eightfold path. Eightfold noble path is all included. We start with Sheila, one who comes to the course has to observe morality for all the ten days. Don't kill, don't steal, don't have sexual misconduct, don't speak lies or harsh words, don't take any intoxicant, that is Sheila. Control your mind, you are observing your breath and you are controlling your mind and purify your mind. This is what it is, Eightfold Noble Path. Vipassana is practical aspect of the Eightfold Noble Path. How can you be passionate about life but remain detached at the same time? Come to Vipassana and you will know how. It looks so difficult now because you don't know how to balance the mind at the deepest level. You try to force this balance at the surface level, that itself is difficult. And even if you have made your mind at the surface level balance, still the unbalance is there at the depth level. You can't come out of it. This Vipassana is only for this purpose so that you can work at the root level and become really happy. If craving and aversion are to be avoided, what are they replaced with? They are replaced with? They are replaced with love, compassion, goodwill. Whenever mind, whenever mind is impure, it becomes more and more impure when you start generating craving, aversion, craving, aversion. And the habit pattern of so long of the past, you kept on generating craving, aversion. Again you generate craving, aversion, you are becoming more and more miserable. By this technique, this habit pattern changes and mind becomes purer and purer, free from craving, free from aversion. A pure mind by nature is full of love, full of compassion. You don't harm yourself, you don't harm others. So just eradicate the impurities in the mind and the love and compassion is a natural result. Your technique is personal, not my technique. Buddha's technique is personal. How it will have effect at a larger socio-political level. What is larger socio-political level? The whole society. We want the whole society to be very peaceful. Very peaceful. Free from all the miseries. But what is society made of? Society is made of individuals. We want peace in the world. But there is no peace in the mind of the individual. The individual all the time generating impurity and remains very miserable. So much of unhappiness is there. How can we have peace in the whole world? So individual's peace is ultimately needed to make the whole society peaceful. Does eating meat interfere with the practice of Vipassana meditation? During meditation period of 10 days, you are given healthy vegetarian food. After that, you are your own master. We don't say that you must eat this or that. But as you progress on the path, you will find that when you become very sensitive, sensitive to these sensations, and you have taken a non-vegetarian food, you will notice very unpleasant sensation in the body. After all this non-vegetarian food, from what? From the meat of a bird, meat of an animal, and this being, whole life was generating craving, aversion, craving, aversion. A human being at least comes out of this to some extent. This being is not possible. So every fiber of this being is full of craving, aversion, craving, aversion. You put so much of craving, aversion habit within yourself and you are giving an input of more craving and aversion. You will start realizing it and you will start coming out of it. But there is no pressure from the teacher that you must become a vegetarian. People become vegetarian naturally. <laughs> Can you learn Vipassana without doing any meditation before? 
better not do any meditation before. <laughs> Vipassana is not a meditation. In meditation you have got one object and you keep your mind concentrated on that object and then you get absorbed in that. That is meditation, that is samadhi. Here the object is constantly changing. Even the breath constantly changing. Sensation constantly changing. So it is a process of observation. Awakening of yourself to realize what is happening within yourself and correcting yourself. You observe what is happening and you observe also how it is harming you and you keep on correcting yourself to come out of the misery. So if you start practicing anything else, it may create difficulty. So come with a clean slate and you will work better. How do you continue your own meditation with such a busy schedule? One has to continue. I have to practice what I preach. If I ask my students, you must meditate every day, I must also meditate every day and that is what I do. I ask my students at least take one ten day course every year and I take one, not only ten day course, every year I take thirty day course, forty five day course to strengthen the purity of my mind. At what age and how can we introduce this technique to our children? Before birth. <laughs> the technique must be given to the children before birth. A pregnant mother, when she joins a course of ten days, she is not working for herself. Not working for herself alone. She is working for the child also. The wonderful vibration that is given to the child. Purity, purity, love, compassion. What nutrition the, the child gets. And if you keep on generating anger, hatred, passion, lust, what information you are giving to the child? What training you are giving to the child? This child will be miserable the whole life. So this is the proper time when you give good message to the child, good nutrition to the child. Many pregnant mothers are coming to the courses with the intention that I want a Dhamma baby. I want a Dhamma baby. Yes, they get Dhamma baby. Because they are giving so good nutrition to the child. Isn't peace possible without torturing your body? Why to torture the body? That means you are generating misery for yourself by torturing yourself and you say this will relieve us from the misery. No. No. Just it's a mental exercise. You keep on changing the habit pattern of the mind. It's not a, not a body exercise. So don't create any strain to your body. Work with the mind only. When do you know you are enlightened? <laughs> I mean, do you keep practicing Vipassana till your last breath? If one is enlightened, certainly one will keep on practicing Vipassana to enjoy the peace and to give a good, good example to others. Look, enlightened and yet practicing Vipassana. It's important to practice Vipassana. Who are the teachers of 10-day residential course? Are they competent? <laughs> they are competent. That is why they are, they are made teachers. Proper training is give, given. It takes years together to become efficient in this technique. And then one must have pure mind to generate love and compassion. One must have a feeling of selfless service without expecting anything in return, then only one is given the training of a teacher. So don't be afraid. Any teacher who is giving this, these courses are well trained. Come to the courses and take advantage of the teaching. Can't, can't I still have fun in life if I learn Vipassana? <laughs> have fun, but with equanimity. Don't lose your equanimity and have fun. Nothing wrong with enjoying fun. What is the difference between Bhakti Yoga and Vipassana? Bhakti is to develop devotion. And it becomes a wrong devotion. If the devotion is only to expect something, please give me this, oh God, oh Goddess, please give me this, please give me this, fulfill this desire, that desire, no. The devotion should be that you have, you understand that your deity, this God or Goddess has these qualities. If not good qualities, how will we got good qualities? So may I get, gain the strength to develop those very qualities myself. Devotion is wonderful. Bhakti is wonderful. It is for this purpose to develop the qualities of your deity. 
what can be said to those of us who dislike ourselves? Why dislike yourselves? You practice your personality and you start liking everything. When the mind is peaceful and pure, you start liking. But there is no attachment. In a detached way, you are always happy. In every situation, you are happy inside and you make others happy. What is true love? True love is, there is no trace of passion, there is no trace of lust. Pure love is compassionate love. It's one way traffic. You just give. Without expecting anything in return. If you love expecting something in return, then you are not, you are not loving this person, you are loving yourself. Because you want something. It's a business love then. Commercial love. You give me and then I give you something. Not pure love. Pure love is one way traffic. You just give. Without expecting anything in return, just give. This is pure love. And this will automatically happen when the mind is pure. How is Vipassana meditation relevant in a world of increasing fascism and terrorism in the name of religion? Because these people do not know what real religion is. Every religion in the world, the quintessence of every religion is to live a moral life with a disciplined mind, pure mind, full of love, compassion, goodwill. Every religion has this essence. But there are outer, outer shell, every religion, outer shell, which is different. Rites, rituals, dogmas, beliefs, this philosophical belief, that philosophical belief, and they start quarreling on that. My belief is right, your belief is wrong, mine is life, because your attachment to your belief, and all this trouble starts. If you give importance to this inner quintessence, which is common to all the religions, all this problem will go away, and Vipassana helps. That is why in Vipassana, people of every religion are participating. There is no religion in the world, no tradition in the world, whose followers are not coming for 10 days Vipassana courses. Even their leaders are coming. Up till now, more than 2,000 Christian priests and nuns have participated. And so many Hindu sannyasis, Buddhist monks, nuns, Jain monks, nuns, they are coming. And everyone feels, this is my religion. Because the quintessence of every religion is the same. I remember the first missionary who came to the courses, three of them. One was a very elderly mother superior. At the end of the course he says, Goenka, you are teaching Christianity in the name of Buddha. I am teaching Dhamma, the way of life. Christ also taught the same thing. Have a pure mind, a pure heart full of love, full of compassion. But how to attain that? Here is a practice and people attain it. Large number of people are coming from different communities, different religions, different traditions. Does one need a guru to realize the self? Are you a guru? <laughs> well, if there is a guru who says, come, I will liberate you. I will liberate you from all your misery. Then there is something wrong. Nobody can liberate us from our misery. One has to work out one's own salvation. But if someone says, I am just a guide, I have walked on this path, I will show you the path, you have to take every step on the path to come out of your misery, then this person is not exploiting you. Otherwise, there is every possibility, every danger of your getting exploited by the so-called gurus. How will Vipassana affect someone who has had a psychic trauma. It is for this purpose. People having psychic trauma, such a big impact on the mind. Sometime memory of some bad incident happened in the life, such a big impact. By this technique, that impact will start coming on the surface. With this sensation or that sensation, you are observing, 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 becomes weaker and weaker and passes away. The memory will remain, but the misery will go away. So the technique is to come out of all sorts of traumas that one has faced in the life. Gwenkaji, there are many more questions, but oh, this will be the last one. This, this will be the last one? one? After that I am liberated? Yes. Others also liberated? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Can one have a healthy sex life without getting confused with cravings and desire? Sex is for bio-reproduction, nothing wrong. But if you become a slave of the sex, then sex with this person, then that person, then that person, one becomes a sex maniac. Come out of that. Don't be that. Have a balanced mind. If both husband and wife, they are good 
a person of meditator, they will find their mind is becoming more and more disciplined. They are not slaves of the sex, even if they have sex, they are not breaking their shila. And slowly, time will come when there will be no need for any sex and they remain, remain so contented, so happy. Real celibacy will come. If one has commitments from another practice of Buddhism, can he still practice 10 days of vipassana without compromising his commitments? What commitments? When you come to know the actual teaching of the Buddha, actual teaching of Buddha is four noble truths. This is suffering. And this is the deep-rooted cause of the suffering. And this is a way to eradicate and come out of suffering. How can you be committed to something which is not this? This is what Buddha taught. How to come out of suffering. He says, I am teaching only two things, suffering and the way to come out of suffering. And here Vipassana is to understand what is suffering and how to come out of suffering. You are not coming out of any kind of commitment you have made. You make good commitment as per the teaching of Buddha. At the third council, the great Buddhist monks said that learning the teaching of Buddha was as important as practicing meditation. Certainly, unless you practice, I don't call it meditation because the word meditation has uh, many different meanings. Observation. Unless you practice this observation, you can't understand where the real misery lies and what is the real cause of the misery at the depth. And you can't change the habit pattern at the deepest level. This was the great invention of Buddha, a great discovery of Buddha rather. And if we miss that discovery, then we are not real followers of Buddha. If somebody says, I am a follower of Buddha, one has to practice Vipassana to come out of all the miseries. Who finances the Vipassana movement? The students who come to the courses, nothing is charged for the teaching. From the Buddha's time, always the teaching should be free. If you start charging for the teaching, then it becomes a commercial commodity. And if you make dharma a commercial commodity, it loses its purity. So there were no charges. Even these are residential courses, so no charges for boarding and lodging also. Then from where the money comes? It does not rain from the sky. These very people who take the course, at the end of the course, they find so much benefit I have got. So much of peace I have got. And I have got a path now. Walking on this, I will become more and more peaceful. May more and more people learn this technique and come out in misery. There is misery all around. So out of love and compassion for other miserable people, one gives donation so that more and more courses can be arranged. Such all the centers that are built, are built by the donation of the grateful students with compassion, whatever donation that they have given. If Vipassana helped King Ashoka, why don't you invite leaders of Israel and Palestine to do Vipassana? By my invitation, who will come? No question of my giving invitation. The message goes. Slowly, in a few years' time, people will start understanding that there exists a technique which can help. And the leaders of the society, they will understand. Good or bad, everything percolates on the top of the society and goes down. If the leaders of the society understand we are responsible for the peace of the society, we are responsible for the misery of the society, they will start practicing. They themselves will come out of all this misery that is now going on and it will start helping the public also. So either it is Israel or, or Palestine or it is India or Pakistan, anywhere. Terrorism is a great... Uh, great disaster for the humanity and this can be relieved, this can be eradicated only by the technique first it starts with the top people now number of people are coming from different religions there are courses going on regularly in Israel regular 10 day courses are going on in Israel and always every course there is a wait list and similarly in the Middle East in Iran courses are going on and there is a wait list it has started. A time will come when people will start realizing, the leaders will start realizing that there is a way where we can also become Ashoka and help ourselves and help others. The time is coming. It will be soon possible. What is the location of the mind? That is what you will know. Coming to the course, you will find what is this mind? How it works? How it reacts? 
everything that will be quite possible for you to understand. Why is it wrong for a person to practice vipassana to cure a disease such as cancer? No, if you join a course to help yourself to get cured for any physical disease, then all the time your attention will be on this disease. Am I getting cured? Am I getting cured? You won't practice. So come to cure your mind. Your mind is a sick mind, full of craving, aversion, defilements. Work for that. And as a byproduct, most of the psychosomatic diseases will automatically go away. You won't have to do anything. But purely physical diseases like cancer, there also you will find some relief. At least the mind will remain very healthy. And you are accepting the pain that you experience. And you are with equanimity, you are accepting it, accepting it, observing it. There have been many cases where somebody has died in cancer and the terminal stage of cancer is so painful. And these people who have died in cancer, good meditators, they won't take any sedative. They will keep on observing, observing, observing the pain and smilingly pass away. They don't cry. It's an art of dying. How to die peacefully in spite of pain. This is possible only when you learn art of living. Then art of dying will become automatically possible. How can I keep on giving pure love to a horrible person? A horrible person needs love. Horrible, miserable. What horrible? This person is generating so much of anger, hatred. And you know now that by generating anger, hatred, I become so miserable. This person is so miserable. Burning. Now this person is burning. I don't feel like throw some, throwing some petrol on this person. I feel like throwing some cold water on this person. He comes out of misery. So have generate love and compassion for horrible persons. They need it. What is there at the deepest level of the mind? Is it emptiness or satchit anand? Satchit anand, you start with that. You observe. You observe the truth that is sat. And you observe the mind, that is chit, and the anand, as much as impurity goes away, that much anand is there. And you reach a stage where there is nothing but peace, harmony, peace, harmony, happiness. And as you keep on observing the truth, subtler, subtler, you transcend the field of mind and matter. You transcend the field of entire sensorium and the peace that you experience then, indescribable. Experience it. And then you won't come to ask me questions like this. Be happy. Be all of you be happy. Enjoy peace. Enjoy harmony.